We are following breaking news overnight. Police responded to two large shootings in different parts of the South Side. Yeah, there's a total of 10 victims here, 10. Police bumped the number of shooting victims up to 15 early this morning. They were shot during what police are calling an exchange of gunfire outside of a funeral. Unfortunately, more people were shot and killed this weekend than the previous, which also happened to be a holiday weekend. So why do you need guns with that much firepower? Protects the dangers out here. Mm -hmm. Many guys told us they'd rather risk the police catching them with a gun than have their rival find them without one. Like you can't just be cruising through no neighborhood that's in war with each other, you know what I'm saying? Because nine times out of ten, they probably don't recognize the car you in at the time and they can mistake you as a shooter from a, a, one of their rival gangs and they'll open fire on you. All right, y'all, y'all read the title of the video. This one's literally just going to be about a brief history of the interactions between the gangster disciples and the black disciples up until now. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. It's not really, if you feel some type of way about this type of stuff, you probably shouldn't watch it. Uh, there's a lot of sensitive information, sensitive content that I'm going to be showing and talking to y'all about. So this is, it's not really a happy story. And to keep it real with y'all, I just literally learned about all this information this year when i used to listen to chief keith i'd hear him talk about old block you know all that type of stuff but i never really knew what it meant behind the lyrics i mean i've heard a couple of diss tracks throughout my lifetime um but i really i wouldn't really pay no mind to it especially when someone would get name dropped i'd just be like oh, whatever i don't even know who that person is but after learning all the stories and everything that happened i was i just look back at it and i'm like shit damn i never thought that this shit went this deep it's hard to explain so i mean y'all once y'all get through this video y'all y'all get what i'm trying to say y'all get it some of y'all might have seen like these type of videos already I've, I've seen like a couple of these type of videos about talking about some of the shit that's happened in chicago one of the guys who made a video was this <laughs> guy from the united kingdom and he's just talking in a british accent talking about that 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 and i'm like what the fuck it's just weird <laughs> And there's another one where this dude uses a text-to-speech. I don't know. I just get some weird vibes from those. And one of the dudes has like 15 ads in one video. This shit will not be monetized ever. This video will not ever be fucking monetized. This is for educational purposes only. All right. So, yeah, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So we start off in Chicago, Illinois. In 1958, a group of young teenagers from Hyde Park, Inglewood, and Kenwood came together as friends to create an alliance in order to fight their enemies or anyone on the block that would mess with them. The founders named their new organization the Devil's Disciples, and by the beginning of 1961, David Barksdale, also known as King David, took sole leadership of the Devil's Disciples and appointed different members to oversee various areas within their neighborhoods. David's goal was to claim small gangs around the area and turn them into factions of the Disciples. And in 1966, in order to help increase recruitment and counteract threats from other gangs, David Barksdale created the Black Disciples Nation, which helped boost recruitment numbers into the thousands. Now while all this was going on, the Gangster Disciples were established on the south side of Chicago, Illinois, in the 1960s by Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover was the leader of his own gang called the Supreme Gangsters, while David Barksdale was also the leader of his own gang called the Black Disciples. They later united the two gangs in 1968 and called themselves the Black Gangster Disciples. Soon after the alliance was formed, Larry Hoover and another upstanding member were charged and convicted for the murder of another member and received 150 to 200 years in prison and six life sentences. With Larry in prison, King David was fully in charge of the black gangster disciples. However, he would later die to kidney complications at the age of 27 on September 2nd, 1974. 
Now, as you can assume, the death of King David led to problems within the Black Gangster Disciple Nation, and the majority of the Black Gangster Disciple Nation believed in becoming more unified after the passing of King David, but some members were opposed to that sentiment. The ideological differences led to the creation of two distinct factions, the Black Gangster Disciples and the Black Disciples. This brought about a rivalry between the two gangs, and there was also bloodshed in the streets immediately after they were created. Now, a new member rose to power named Mickey Bull, who took over the Black Disciples and made peace with the Gang Disciples. Bull's leadership brought a temporary lull in the violence until he was murdered in the streets by Gangster Disciples in August 1991. Immediate backlash from the Black Disciples culminated into a rampage, and between 1991 and 1994, the rivalry between the Gangster Disciples and the Black Disciples intensified, and it would come to an end after Marvell Thompson would intervene, bringing peace between the two factions. However, after multiple leaders took big indictments and basically all the heads of every Chicago gang was locked up, along with the projects being torn down, it spread everyone out, which is why today the gangs are so mixed up and you'll often see GDs that are a part of BD blocks. And you'll have multiple sets like O Block, 600, Front Street, STL, as well as Inglewood sets like Lamron and Brick Squad, who both have BDs and GDs inside them. Almost every one of these gangs either have no leaders or no one really enforcing gang law anymore. And that's why there's been so much conflict because all the gangs basically just, just represent their block sets. There's even been accounts of some members saying they're not even black disciples or gangster disciples. They just rep the set of their block. Now all this brings us to where we are today. And I got a map pulled up for y'all showing you the south side of Chicago where our main story is going to take place. Now as you can see you have multiple sets all divided across the map and I wanted to make note and show that this red line is the infamous 63rd street. Essentially what you could call it is the main border separating the GDs and the BDs. Now for this video's purposes the BDs are going to be shown in blue and the GDs are going to be shown in purple. Also just want to point out that the two sets above STL and EBT called Taekwon World and Jaro City are in brown because they're mostly composed of renegade BDs and renegade GDs and also a handful of renegade MCs or Mickey Cobras. However, these two sets are still allied with the GDs. Now I've also got a second map for y'all and this one is this one's just a little bit more north of the first one. These other two main sets are going to be very prevalent in the story. And this first one up top, THF 46 or Trigger Happy Family 46, is a BD set. While the territory below them, 051 Young Money, is a set of Mickey Cobras. However, they're allied with the GDs and they're going to be represented in green. So one of our first incidents kicking off this whole story would be D Thang from Brick City or 600 and Ty from YMB. And I just want to point out that TYMB used to be known as YMB at this point, and they were called the Young Money Boys. They were still a set of BDs, they just had a different name. And if you look on the map there in today's TYMB territory. Now d Thing and Ty would kill Dalvin from Jaro City on September 14th, 2007. I couldn't even find a reason why Dalvin was killed, but that's just how it went down. Now a year later, in 2008, D-Thing from 600 will go on to kill Hottie from Jaro City on September 21st, 2008. Now this would solidify him as being one of the baddest dudes from 600. On September 27, 2008, Aki from THF 46 would kill Zico from 051 Young Money. Now, I've explained to y'all the THF 46 and 051 sets and who they were allied with. Just to break THF down a little bit more, THF stands for Trigger Happy Family. And the name is personified to the set because they rarely do hits alone. And when they do hits together, just about everybody there is shooting their gun. And there's no instance where only one person shoots and the rest watch. Now, in this situation, it wasn't even a hit. Apparently, Aki killed Zico over a game of dice and this started the war between THF 46 and 051 Young Money. It's my block. Man. I ain't never going on. Green. It's my block. Oh. You got my I ain't never going nowhere. It's my block. Big ass dick. Little ass feet.
a year later on may 21st 2009 chicken from stl ebt will go on to kill ty from young money boys and after this ymb would change their name to tymb which stands for ty you're my brother two months later on july 16th 2009 tone bone from no love city which is just a set of GDs would go on to kill Lil Mo from 300 Lamron. Now this would affect a lot of people in the BDs. He was blood cousin to Lil Reese and he was best friends with Lil Dirt. Now in 2010, on January 30th, Chief Keef from Lamron would post a video called Chief Keef and Wick City in the hallway. And it's just him and his boys. They're probably all like 14 to 15 in the video and the guy standing on the wall is King Vaughn. I just wanted to point out this was one of the first videos he ever posted on YouTube and it's just some really interesting footage. Now later that year on August 25th, 2010 it's said that Wooski from STL EBT would kill Reezy from Wick City. Now, Reezy was a 29 year old Wick City member who got shot during a big fist fight between Wick City and STL EBT. Apparently, STL and Wick City would always go around and have fist fights, and that would just be that. But in this situation, someone was killed. Now, there's a lot of speculation that Wooski didn't actually do it. More information on him, he would have been around 11 to 13. No one really knows. The word is, is it was Wooski who killed him. Now, a month later, on September 14th, 2010, Wee Wee from STO would kill Lil Chris from TYMB. Apparently, Wee Wee told the police that he and another person were looking for someone that they believe shot at him two days earlier and that they approached a group of people, including Lil Chris, and began firing, even though the person they suspected of shooting at him wasn't even present. Now the next year, Cortez and Courtney, who are twin brothers, and Manny, all from TYMB, would kill Tuca from STO on January 12th, 2011. Now the story goes that apparently Tuca was at a bus stop, saw the car and recognized Courtney and Cortez and started dropping Ys for 051 Young Money and cracking pitchforks, which is a sign for the GDs. And Tuca was known to make fun of Ty and other dead BDs over the internet. So in this situation, he was just taunting his ops like he would always do. Apparently they were actually out drilling and they drove back around and killed him at the bus stop. STL EBT would then take on the name Tukaville for their territory. What? STL crazy. You already know. See, I got the loud right here. You know, it's almost gone, but I don't give a fuck. Cause I've been playing up for nothing. <laughs> That nigga fucked up. These niggas know about land run shooting, check the news, channel two, B O D Y B A G, body bag these bitches too. Bag on niggas, go and put that glad on niggas. Broski told me trash them niggas. Niggas say they fuck with me, but I be looking past them niggas. I'm a hitter by myself, I'm a hitter by myself, I'm a hitter by myself, I don't feel nobody. On April 8th, 2011, Montana from 051 Young Money would kill Quint from THF 46. Now this would be the first get back for Zico who died in 2010. And Montana killed Quint in a drive-by and wounded two others that he was with. And it's said that he turned his car around and tried to run over the guys that Quint was with. He hit one of them, but he survived with a broken leg along with the other. Now later that month, S. E. Day and Chief Keith would drop Hustle Hard, showing that strong bond between 600 and 300 Lamron, and furthering the rap exposure for the BDs. Now, in the video, you could actually see a lot of members in this video that are gonna end up coming up later in this story. We drilled out them drills though, blew off in pop pills too. Big 30 them drills too, you fuck around and get killed too. Made, get played, we him and I get paid. 
A month later, on May 22nd, 2011, S. Dot would drop the song Drill Music. And in the video, there's L.A. Capone, Rondo, 600 Breezy, D. Rose, Mimo, 600, Lil Steve, and Waldo. All shots, my court, get back up, plow my 40, get clapped. I get you sent that, shorties push your shit back. Three days after this, Lil Durk and Lil Reese would drop Rob Who, repping Lamron and shouting out their dead homie Lil Mo. We get it pop, you be surprised who up in the field. 300 trying to catch a body call at Holyfield. The Dower got me super focused on this shit, yo. Why you whooping these bitches? Now he sleeping with fishes. Too cut fucked up my vision. Hey, Lil Mo, bro, I miss you. After that, I kept distance. Nobody tell me shit. You know that I won't listen. Now, sadly, on this same day, Gutta from THF46 would accidentally kill himself. The story goes that he was with his friends and they were playing with a gun that they thought was empty. However, one bullet was still chambered. Gutta would jokingly end up putting the gun to his head and pulling the trigger, leading to his death. Now that summer, on July 6, 2011, Antoine Reynolds from Dodge City, which is just a Mickey Cobra set, and Marlon Boyce from No Love City would kill Taisky from 300 Lamron. Apparently they pulled up in a gold Cadillac and fired an assault rifle toward a crowd on the block of South Normal, while the driver fired a handgun, and Taisky would end up being hit and killed. Now this affected Lil Dirk a lot, cause apparently they are really close. On July 16th, 2011, Montana from 051 Young Money would kill Tony who was affiliated with THF 46. Now the story goes that during a pickup game at a Houston playground park, Tony's competitiveness led him to engage in typical trash talking with the opposing teams. Y'all know how it goes. The small common jabs during the game turned into a shoving contest before the tension could be diffused. However, people that were there say that Tony wasn't even a part of the physical tussle. Tony's girlfriend told her boyfriend's parents that Tony got a Facebook message a few days after the trash talking from a girl warning him that someone was gonna come after him and Tony never told her who the girl was and Tony would end up being killed while he was walking home with his friends. Tony wasn't technically affiliated with THF. He was just really from the same hood and usually most athletes aren't bothered by neighboring sets and sometimes they're even looked after by those inside their hood. He was seven feet tall and looking forward to play basketball in college. Now the next day, Domo from Mob would kill Baldy from 600 on July 17th, 2011. Now this would affect 600 a lot because Baldy was a love member by the BDs and this would only increase tensions in the conflict between them and the GDs. On August 10th, 2011, KI, FBG Butter, and Scrap would kill Odie from Wick City. The story goes that KI wanted to kill Odie bad because he would ride up an STL and quote unquote bully them or just mess around with them. Now this was before when it was regular that STL and Wick City would go around and have fist fights instead of killing each other. The three caught him walking out of O Block where they shot at him and eventually killed him near AutoZone. And the story goes that Odie's revolver was taken by KI as a trophy. And this was the beginning of O Block.
Who that boy from Messendale? Some niggas acting no dumb, talking shit, eat a shell. And my flow so fucking hot, feel like I belong in hell. And I got so many bars, feel like I belong in jail. L just a month later on september 5th 2011 fredo santana from front street and front street is basically a subset of brick city or 600 they're just a group of bds from the same block fredo would drop his first song hit it calling to round up all the bd shooters and even shouts out 300 lamb ron round them hitters up round them hitters up just that hit of music throw them l's out Give your ass a halo, bang, bang. take your ass out, but we ain't going no to date though, 300 we on play though. Now just a week later, Dome from Jaro City would end up killing D-Thang from 600. This would be revenge for Hottie's death back in 2008, and according to police reports, before Dome fatally shot D-Thang, he told him, this is for Hottie. Now a week after this, Scrap from Mob would kill Lil Steve from 600. A lot of people believe Scrap's the one who did this because it was reported that Lil Steve's killer had a t-shirt around his head and there was a video of Scrap that surfaced with a t-shirt around his head. I don't, I don't know. Why the fuck these niggas ain't hanging out? I'm ready. A lot of people even say that Lil Steve was the one shooting at Scrap before Scrap shot back. I don't think we'll really ever know. Now money, when y'all here, seek a word inside you, falling like an athlete, bitch, I can't help it. Yeah, well, damn, bitch, I go hard, up in the streets, ask about Lil Mark. All you need to know, I keep a couple goons. Shout out to the app, shout out to Wu, shout out Mad Boy, shout out City, what it do. On October 18th, 2011, Wooski and Brick from STL will kill Platoon from O Block. The summary of this one is that two shooters walked up to Platoon while he was with his girlfriend and shot him in the head and then walked a little further down the block and ended up shooting a 15 year old in the head. Luckily though, the 15 year old ended up surviving. About two weeks later, on October 30th, 2011, Chief Keefe would drop John Madden, shouting out OTF, Lamron, 600, O Block, Front Street, D Rose, and specifically dissing Tuca. The next month, C Day from 600 would kill Tutu from Jaro City, and this hit would create Tutu Gang. It said that C Day was especially brutal in his hits and shot Tutu several times in the head. After Tutu's death, the shorties from Jaro City started to be coached by KI because Tutu was no longer around to teach them the ropes. So KI and other STL members would step up and started drilling at 600 and TYMB. On this same day, M Thang from 600, who was the brother of D Thang, would kill T Streets from 051 Young Money. And it said that T Streets advocated for the beef to end between THF and 051. And I guess T Streets calling for peace um, ended up for him becoming a target. Later that month, on November 28th, 2011, Buka and Side dropped Man Down, dissing their recently killed dead ops, and especially dissing Tukavu. Now the vocals aren't the best in this song, but it's not like they're professional mixers. It's really mostly about what they're saying in the song. A lot of niggas say they too can feel crazy till they ass be in the brick or they brains be on the pavement. Top of it like 40 rounds and STL all of a sudden got a man down. Nigga, I'm bossing shit every day, hands down. The next month on December 3rd, 2011, D Rose from 600 would kill Dale. 
from STO as revenge for Platoon, who was killed two months earlier. The next day, E-Day would drop Bosin, Bosin Shid, shouting out OD, Chief Keef, O-Block, and sending shots to his GD ops. Now, the video has Dirk, T-Roy, LA Capone, Rondo, and Prince Dre, and just a lot of other members that are going to end up popping up in this story. You'll recognize them by the end of the video. Grill for OD with some wet niggas. Yeah. Ride through they hood, they run cause they bitch niggas. I guns like whole six hundred and young money, you can bet that. Hit the wick up, Charles, where that tech get. Old blocks. On my chief shit, bitch, I need more cake. Talking shit that'll put you in that more place. The next week, EDOT would drop 600 Boy, shouting out his 600 shooters and his dead homies with Chief Keith, E Day, and Tay 600 all in the video. SOS, let's stack it up. I send these wounds to clap them up. Blowing with this Ruger bitch. Number nine, let's do a hit. Catch one that I. Bang, no cheap key. 800 late like drilling shit. Young money, we killing shit. Four sis, we dropping bit. Now Ron ain't no shit. King. They with the shits. 051, we drilling shit. Screaming fuck a four six. Screaming fuck a Welch world. Them niggas ain't no shit. Fuck a op. CPD can't fuck a cop. Love niggas that get dropped. Love niggas that get popped. Patch your moms and your pops don't get no fuck. Now the next year, on January 5th. 2012, S Dot would drop Chop It Down, repping 600 and saying fuck the ops. And in the video, you could even see both Chief Keef and LA Capone, and it said that the video was allegedly filmed in Chief Keef's house. Boy, bad ass to the death, circle closes, OTF, Marty gone, deep thing, lusty shit fucked up. You know what? FTO, fuck the ops, they gotta go. 600 on rockin' wait for my guys, I gotta blow. Two weeks later, on January 17th, 2012, Chief Keith would drop 300, reppin' Lamron. And you know how the shit goes. Nigga, I'm 300, man. I'm coolin' with my youngest. Fuck nigga don't wanna be Nah, nah, I like my bitch to see my bitch. A lot of cushion, a lot of guns, a lot of guns, nigga. You see us, you better run now, run now. The next month, the war between 051 and the BDs would intensify as Melly and Kiddo from 051 Young Money would kill Shaq from 600. Two weeks later, Boss Trail from STO would kill Sherrod from O Block. Now the story goes that Boss Trail was a top shooter from STO and would kill Sherrod by seeing him across the street, using the laser on his gun to aim, and shooting him in the head. Two months later, Lil Reese would drop us, shouting out OTF and GBE which was Dirk and Chief's label. And yeah, it goes hard. About two weeks later, T-Roy from O Block and Cortez from TYB would kill Doc on April 28th, 2012, as revenge for Sherrod. Now, the thing about Doc is that he had been out of prison for two months and was already on parole for stealing a car. But apparently, he was trying to change his ways and was actually trying to get a painter's license and had been doing maintenance on property owned by his aunt. He even received his GED while he was in prison. And afterwards, Doc was trying to guide his younger relatives to avoid a life of crime and was even showing his little brother and was even showing his little brother the right path he needed to take. His aunt even said that he was looking for a steady job and he didn't want to be involved with street life anymore. A month later, on March 28, 2012, Lil Durk would drop L's anthem, calling out the ops, representing Lamron, and shouting out all the shooters. The L's 
up for them hitters. If you don't fuck with me, then fuck them. My own niggas don't trust them. Brick squad, I say fuck them. L's up for them hitters. Throw the L's up for them hitters. Life ain't no joke, nigga. L's up for Lil Mo, nigga. Next month, on May 14th, 2012, Fredo would drop War, and there's no sneak dissing in it. It's just him going hard and shouting out Lamra. I got that 30 in my pocket. What's up? 300 swole in the club. Get stuck. Two weeks later, Bobo from THF 46 would kill Lil Chief from 051 Young Money. Now, Lil Chief was 35 years old, a father of four, and engaged. Unfortunately, he did have ties to 051 Young Money, but his friends and family insisted that he had left it all behind. Bobo was out drilling, and Lil Chief just got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. The next month, C Day and D Rose would kill Fathead from 051 Young Money. Now, if you remember, I talked about C Day being especially brutal in his hits. It's said that he shot the victim eight times in the head. Two days later, Nate from Jaro City would kill Taekwon from Jaro City on June 24th, 2012. Apparently Taekwon was attending a party with his older sister on an early Sunday when a fight broke out and shots ended up being fired. Police said that Taekwon ran away from the altercation but was struck by gunfire and killed. And this was the beginning of Taekwon World. It's Taekwon. My name is Marshawn. So shh, be quiet. Why are you at Marshawn? Marshawn, I'm dead. <laughs> About a week later, on June 30th, 2012, Lil Mick from 051 Young Money would kill Black from THF 46. And the reports indicated that a man armed with an AK 47 assault rifle got out of a vehicle and fired at least 10 shots at Black, which resulted in him being killed. Now the next month, on July 17th, 2012, Lil Reese would drop bad. And in the video, you can see Chino, M Thang, T Roy, and Boss Talk. The next day, this Chief Keef rant would go viral and become the intro for Love Sosa. Always in a barbershop. Chief Keef ain't about this. Chief ain't about that. My boy, a BD on fucking Lamron and them. He, he, they say don't be nigga put on no work. Shut the fuck up. Y'all niggas ain't no shit. All you motherfuckers talking about, Chief Keef ain't no hitter. Chief Keef ain't this. Chief Keef a fake. Shut the fuck up. Y'all don't live with that nigga. Y'all know that nigga got caught with a ratchet. Shooting at the police and shit. Nigga been on probation since fucking... I don't know when. Motherfucker, stop fucking playing them like that. Them niggas savages out there. If I catch another motherfucker talking sweet about Chief Keef, I'm fucking beating their ass. About a week later, Chief Keef and Lil Reese would drop Don't Like. And man, you know how it goes, man. Don't like, like. Don't like, like. A snitch, nigga, that's that shit I don't like. A fart, nigga, that's that shit I don't like. A snitch, nigga, that's that shit I don't like. Off a flat, I might take flight. 300, bitch, we hot, we done took flight. The next month, on August 8th, 2012, 50 shots from Jaro City would kill White White from O Block. And afterwards, he was arrested for opening fire on officers, and he ended up being wounded and remains locked up to this day. Now, now sometime this month, I don't have the exact date for when he dropped this song. Lil Jojo from a set of Renegade GDs called the 069 Brick Squad would drop the song BDK or 300K, dissing the BDs and 300 Lamron especially, and calling out Dirk. Dirk say fuck this squad, so I can't wait to catch him. Get it? Squeeze this fucking 40, now they got him on a stretcher. This is not a diss zone, this is just a message. Right, right. These niggas claim 300, but we BDK. BDK, yeah, bitch, we BDK. 
The next month, on September 4th, 2012, a video was posted to YouTube of Jojo and his fellow Brick Squad members driving past Lil Reese with their two arguing from their respective cars. Jojo can be heard screaming Brick Squad and hurling insults, and at the end of the clip, someone can be heard saying, I'm gonna kill you. Why you a bitch, boy? Hey, Ricky, little bitch. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? Hey, hey, I'm a Brick Squad. Yeah, Brick Squad, boy. What the fuck is you talking about, boy? You little bitch. After this incident, Lil Jojo and another dude who was with him got to talking shit on Twitter and even tweeted out the video itself. That night at about 9 p.m., officers found Lil Jojo dead in the street and the report said he had been riding a bicycle when a gunman inside of a tan or gray vehicle opened fire and killed him. It's still not officially known who killed him and Chief Keefe even tweeted this a couple hours after the incident. Now about a week later, Scrap and Dooski would drop Lacken while it's cracking. And I don't know, basically what I got from this is just is some youngins and they wanted to let people know that they were out here with the shits. And later that month, on September 29th, 2012, Dooski, Buki, and Scrap would drop Ain't Nothing Bigger. And in the video, you could even see K.I., Scrap, Bebe, Wooski, Duck, and a whole lot of GDs. And it's pretty rare to see something like that. Back in this field, where is all we knew is kill. He say that he on my heels, I pop him, then I pop a pill. Now the next month on October 12th, 2013, Chief Keith would drop Love Sosa, repping Lamron and O Block. And he also sends out a shout out specifically to D Rose from 600. These bitches love Sosa, oh and the no man. Fucking with the old boss, you gon' get fucked over. Raw is a rose, boss, convertible and balls, boy. Now the day after this, King Vaughn from O Block would kill Modell from STL EBT. Now this is King Vaughn's first alleged body. About two weeks later after this, on October 30th, 2012, Jay Money, King Vaughn, and Big A, all from O Block, would kill P5 from Jaro City. Two days after this, Kiddo from 051 Young Money would kill Trix from 600, and Trix died two days after making this tweet. About a week later, T-Roy from O Block would kill Boss Trail from STO in revenge for Sherrod. Now Boss Trail knew he was in danger after killing Sherrod and he knew that he needed to get out of Chicago. So he planned to move to Iowa where he would live with two friends and where he would lead on a job. He bought a ticket for a bus leaving on November 10th, but in the early morning hours of November 8th, just two days before that bus would have left, he was killed. About two weeks later, Bite Down and Blast His Ass from 600 and King Vaughn from O Block would kill James from Mob. You are out, it ain't really even safe on your block. Every night, headshots, you better sleep with your clock. You probably never saw a dead body in your life. I got youngest blowing pipes and they ain't trying to earn strikes. 
boys ain't making no noise in this fucking field. Boy, see me, I keep a steel boy. Run up, make it kill, boy. Now, the next year on January 7th, 2013, Chief Keith's stepbrother, Chris, will be shot in Southside, and it was unknown by who. Two days after this, L.A. Capone would drop murder, shouting out all his 600 shooters, including his homies, dead and alive, and calling out the ops. Man down, that's a murder. We said shots, it's a murder. Fuck the ops, we do murders. My block got murders. A week after this, L.A. Capone and Rondo would drop face down, basically just letting their ops know that they should fear both of them, while dissing Tutu from STO, and especially the 051 set. I'ma have to let it spray, show him he ain't beating K. When you see me better, keep your face down. That why that ails to the ops. Fuck the cops, like two two get pop. About a week after this, Five Star and Lil Dirk would drop dope. Dirk would diss 051 Young Money in this song, calling them broke boys with no money, and would especially shout out O Block along with Boss Top. And Five Star was affiliated with the Folly Boys, which is a set of the Black Pea Stone Gang. And the Folly Boys basically shared the same ops as Lamron. Dirk say style, let's do a track, and I say let's remix the dope. Polly boys and OTF, that's a lot of gun smoke. DJ, he call Boonette, Polly clip though, we fam. OTF 300 the lamb, call up for dope and gram. Bang, bang, 50 per no young money. Man, what boys ain't got no money. That Molly got me on zombie. That I bet shit ain't shit. Now, the next month, on May 5th, 2013, Dirk would drop, This Ain't What You Want. Cause I hopped into this industry. This ain't what they want. See this rap shit ain't shit to me. This ain't what they want. This ain't what you want. I'm from the land where ain't no lack in there. This ain't what you want. I rap them up, we get a dog cut. A week later, Rondo would drop the song Rondo, letting people know that he's OTF, out here repping 600, and even shouts out shooters J Money and D Rose. The next month, on June 10th, 2013, Boss Top and Lil Durk would release 30 Choppers, a music video made on O Block featuring guys like Chief Keith, T Roy, LA Capone, and Big A. Now, three days after this, Arrow from 051 Young Money would kill Lil Rob from 300 Lamron. And apparently, this was due to the song that Lil Dirk and Five Star dropped earlier that year, Dope, which included a specific diss towards 051. Three days later, Scrap, Ruga, and Duck would drop from the squad, ripping GDs and calling out the ops. From the squad, boy, everybody, squad, got bodies, toting guns, it's a hobby. It's hot as a cactus, and I keep that hammer, you can call me Judge Mathis, since you want a trick, I'ma do a trick. I'm from the squad, on the man with the mob, if a nigga acting hard, crack his head like credit cards. The next month, on July 10th, 2013, L.A. Capone would drop round here, acknowledging the violence and death going on around in his area, and repping 600. It's a lot of violence around here, so a lot of silence around here, a lot of people dying around here, a lot of people crying around here, and they clapping poles around here, catching bodies old around here, we just chasing O's around here, we ain't chasing O's around here, we... 600 through drills, don't none of them squeal, so how we can't chill. About two weeks later, LA Capone and Rondo would drop Play for Keeps, repping 600, shouting out shooters Buka, D Rose, C Day, Tay 600, and M Thang, and even Disc Tuka and the GDs. Got a motherfucker down, no serve, no serve, big 30 hanging out, no curve, no curve. 
crazy. These niggas don't talk. These niggas think it's a joke. Let me see a op, I'm blow. See a lot of niggas I change. The next month, on August 12th, 2013, TTB Nez, a rapper cool with 051 but not officially affiliated, would drop Fuck the Ops, basically dissing all the Southside BD sets. I'm in the field every day. We got thirties, we got eights. Just like LA from 600, and I'ma shoot him in his face. Ten no lack, smoking like some dope. Fuck that up them niggas' souls. And that seven leave them full. We give out smoke that shit for free. I got a Z call up. Rugas, Lugas, and Cougars, Clip, Slogas, School Rulers. Nigga, we in that field, you in the house on computers. GDM, BDK, Tino Lack and get gray. And the county shit real, niggas get shanked in the face. Cray, Cray, he go hard. 06 for fucking God. Mayor, EBT, free my nigga, Lil Dom. Next month on September 3rd, 2013, Lil B and KI from STL will kill J Money from O Block. Now the story goes that he got set up by a girl, and when he walked in her house, KI and Lil B were waiting for him. And when he saw this, he ran and they chased him down and killed him. Two days later, Rondo would drop Hang With Me, calling out his ops, dissing Tuka, shouting out shooters C Day and T Roy, and paying homage to J Money. Smoking on the Tuka pack, yeah, I'm happy. Got the fucking 50 in the middle. Riding around on Tuka day, well, like one or two. That's it, nigga, said Tuka gang, and we gon' murder you. Later that month, on September 26, 2013, Lil Mick from 051 Young Money would kill L.A. Capone from 600. The story goes that L.A. was finished up recording and walked out the studio when Lil Mick creeped up behind him in an alleyway. And it's allegedly said that Lil Mick said, oh yeah, nowhere to run now, before shooting L.A. in the leg in the back. Mick then stood over L.A. while he was on the ground and tried to keep shooting, but his gun ended up jamming and he fled the scene. Apparently a GD rapper from the studio called 051 Young Money and let them know L.A. was there dissing them. The next month, on October 7th, 2013, Rondo would drop Taliban, showing off 600's firepower, shouting out shooters D-Rose and C-Day, and also dissing dead 051 member Fathead. I'm with the gang and you can't hang us, don't no fuck around, they tryna stop these niggas flexing, they ain't from my town, from that club boy, it don't cost a lay a nigga don't, say out the lane, we do our thing Let's and go. they don't make a sound. Later that month, on October 19, 2013, Rondo would drop Life of a Savage, emphasizing all the shit he's been through, including losing L.A. Capone, and goes on to mention how much harder he's gonna work to try to get that record deal, all while being in the streets. Gotta get a deal, no, I can't wait. Gotta see a meal right now, this day, and if I'm up on my lane, he gon' meet this cake. The next month on November 1st, 2013, Lil Reese would drop team, rapping 300, shouting out OTF and GBE. Catch up in traffic, we gon' do our thing. Let's go. Catch me off in traffic, bitch, I got that name, that thing. About two weeks later, Dre Money, Westbrook, and Bob O would kill Big A from 051 Young Money. Big A was a member of 051, and Ario from 051 was her little brother. And THF would have rather have killed Ario, but instead they killed Big A while she was at a gas station. About a week after that, Rondo and Lil Durk would drop Ride, 
paying homage to LA, shouting out OTF, and showing respect to the BDs that were in the street putting in work. But the niggas out here like me, that, 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 that's gonna go hard. Ain't too many niggas out here that, that, that. Three days after this, Pluto from 300 Lamron would die in a car accident. The story goes that Ivory from TYMB was fucking around with his gun and it accidentally went off and hit Pluto while he was driving, causing him to crash. Next month, Rondo would drop The End on December 14th, 2013. And I personally think this song represented the pain and anger that Rondo was feeling that year. And then the song even pays homage to LA Capone and Jay Money, along with giving a warning to his ops that if they pull up, they'll get shot quick. And on Christmas of 2013, Rondo, Lil Durk, and L.A. Capone were released the song Brothers. And this was the last song that L.A. recorded in the studio before he was killed. I'm here with my brothers. I'm here with my brothers. Since they took my bro L.A., man, I can't even pitch. They took a fucking savage, man. Bro was a... The next year in 2014, Manny Fresh from STO would kill Lil Mo from 300 Lamron. Apparently, Lil Mo was dating Manny Fresh's girlfriend when they both got into a fight, and Manny Fresh would intervene and get into a fight with Lil Mo. Manny Fresh would then leave, and after a short time later, he would return and shoot Lil Mo. On January 30th, 2014, Ide, S.Dot, Tay 600, and Rondo would drop 6 0 paying homage to all their dead homies, calling for the release of D Rose and repping Brick City. The next month, on February 12, 2014, Lil Los and D Rose would kill Big V from Taekwon World. The police report said that the freshman at Dunbar High School was walking with two other teens at about 8.20 p.m. when a white van pulled up and a gunman inside opened fire, resulting in Big V being shot and killed. The day after this, E-Day would release a music video war, once again repping 600, calling out FBG and dissing Tuka and Lil James. I'm like, fuck FBG, them little niggas so funny to me. Put C-Day or Rondo up on you, who you want it to be? You want that bus stop like Tuka, we put you under the seat. They like six double low boy, they so goddamn hot in the street. Don't catch a fair head, leave your brains like all in the street. Look duck, can't duck this club, you can catch a hollow from me. Later this month, on February 28th, 2014, Fredo would drop OG Bobby Johnson freestyle, shouting out the BDs, Front Street, and Shooter D Rose. Word on the street, I'm a suspect. I am. Hang with BDs and shot Let's racks. get it. Chop on the side where they couch at. I ain't gotta talk. Get juice, my gun gon' blast that. Clown ass nigga, I just laugh at. Laugh at. Looking like a lip with my mask with my at. Me, this Twitter beef, miss me. Miss me. Got a 30, got a 40, got a 50. Got a 50. I'ma pull up on your block. Juice D Rose coming with. Come on, the next month, on March 8th, 2014, Chief Keith and Tato would drop war, dissing Tuka, Tutu. Fathead and two of Lil Jojo's friends and Brick Squad affiliates, Jay Loud, who was killed wearing a Lil Jojo hoodie, and Aiki Muhammad, who was killed by a friend during a dispute. On March 25th, 2014, Lil Mark from 051 Young Money would drop No Competition, also titled OTF Dis, Disembaldi, Lil Mo, Tayski, Lil Rob. Trix, D Thang, Lil Steve, Odie, LA Capone, the BDs as a whole, J Money, Rondo, 300 Lamron, and the <laughs> and the Chicago Police Department. All while paying homage to his dead homies, Fathead and Tuka. Body pack, most 
Tasty pack, tasty pack, blue rock pack. Wake up, ate a bowl of tush while I was blown on B. Three days later, Twilla from THF 46 and D Rose from 600 would kill Lil Mark. Apparently, Lil Mark got caught at the same bus stop twice in a two day span. The first time, allegedly Vaughn, Twilla, and someone else caught Lil Mark at the bus stop and he barely ended up getting away. The next day, someone spotted Lil Mark there and called up either D Rose or Twilla and they pulled up and killed him. D Rose would then go on to post this video, but he ended up deleting it later, saying, there's a Tuca on 51st, and it's a video of him at the crime scene. Twilla also returned to the crime scene and took a picture where Lil Mark had died. Hey, it's a Tuca on 51st! Damn, body down. Oh, I don't think he's a Body down, 51st. Gang. Man, damn. Now the same day, D Rose was also arrested and found guilty for the murder of Big V. Now literally the next day, Lil B from STO would be killed by police and the whole situation is kind of fishy. A lot of people believe that the police department lied about his death because there's a lot of it that doesn't really make sense. Um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to speak on that shit to be honest, but y'all can look up the details of what happened and see for yourselves. The next month on April 10th, 2014, Bebe from Mob would kill Blood Money from Front Street. Blood Money, also known as Big Glow, was a rapper and the cousin of Chief Keef. He claimed Front Street and was close to a lot of gangs and a lot of members, and he was shot outside while visiting his family's home. Many people believe Bebe did it, but it's very uncertain. The next day, Big A and King Vaughn from O Block would kill KI from STO. Now, the loss of KI would infuriate STO, and after the loss of many important members, the GDs would be out for blood in the upcoming years, and they would take advantage of King Vaughn, Cide, Rondo, D Rose, Manny, M Thing, T Roy, Boss Top, and Boss Money all being incarcerated. Two weeks after KI's death, Lil Tuan from Taekwon World and Can't Get Right from STO would kill Lil Sam from O Block. Now, it's not sure that they actually did it, but here's a screenshot of an O Block member paying respects after his death. The next month, on May 31st, 2014, Jilla, Melly, and Preboy from 051 Young Money would kill Nooski. Lil Dirk and Nooski, who is his cousin, were out shopping and Nooski was sitting in a car waiting for Dirk to finish buying some shoes. 051 would ambush him while he was in the car and Nooski tried to drive away and ended up crashing. When Dirk came out after hearing the shots, it was already too late. After this, 051 began dissing Lil Dirk on the internet and including Mubu Crump, who was from Joe City, who actually went to the spot where Nooski was shot and streamed it on Instagram Live. They left his ass right here. You feel me? They left his ass up here on folks and them tweaking. Buying some shoes. Y'all see, y'all see real niggas be up here though. Nigga play with me up here on folks and this bills when bitch on the news. I look like Nooski. Hit his ass up right here on Pat. I'm with the nigga that did. He don't want to be on camera though. Hit his ass up right here on Pat. You hit me? They fucked my boy up. Right here, you feel me? Historic events. Y'all know I'm gonna bring y'all around this shit. Historic events. Huh, wish a nigga would play with me, boy. I look like no
the next month just blow and Lil Boo from 600 would kill Scrap from Mob on June 7, 2014, outside during a party. Might well bend down a little bit. Just bend down a little bit. What you mean, like this? Yeah, a little more, a little more. That shit looks slick, boy. Squat the knees, dude. The next week, C-Day, Rondo, and E-Day would drop OG Bobby Johnson, dissing Tuka, and shouting out 600 shooter Lil Boo. Smoking on the Tuka like it's hookah. Like 50 in the tank plus a cooler. Plus a cooler. Nigga I ain't chasing no hoes in the street, nigga. Run up on his ass with the mop stick. I ain't playing with his ass, I'ma drop him quick. Then bail out. Can't tell now. Shoot a nigga, look, now they want to tell now. Go crazy. Rondo. And traffic going like the fucking lazy. I ain't trying to hear shit, bitches. Fuck you, pay me. If I see a hot for a fuck, put him on the baby. A week after this, Lil Boo and Blast his ass from 600 would kill Polo from 051. And later that year, on October 2nd, 2014, Chief Keef would drop Finito. The next year, on January 23rd, 2015, Just Blow from 600 would drop 600 bars, repping his set, shouting out Boss Top, paying homage to LA Capone, and calling for the release of C Day. I can never lack, go to sleep with the gas, smoke a nigga top, then I go get another gat, gat 22, I'm a young time by the Glock, you catch me on the old smoke with those boss top. Like two blood smoke, you and your mans, cut smoke, cotton rind, they roll the stairs, niggas say they real, but they really pretend, this shit never stop, it never for my brother, we'll catch you on a bright day. Them shots make a run like a relay. Free 22 shots, that C day. And I'm all caked up, no B day. Two months later, on March 21st, 2015, Tay 600 would drop the computer's freestyle. Dissing Tuka, STLEBT, Zico, Lil Jojo, and Lil Mark. Cash out on Tuga and top back two slots while I'm off a school bus. Like suck like Ripo, get me deep on why I'm off the Zico. No, I won't save her. Four days after that, Lil Durk would drop the Finito remix, repping OTF, shouting out Lamron, and more specifically saying that he's gonna go shoot Young Money up. And y'all know who that is by now. Two days after that, Melly from 051 would kill OTF Chino on March 27, 2015. Allegedly, it's because Dirk had released the Finito remix saying that he was going to shoot Young Money up. And apparently, there's a video out there with Melly on Twitter berating Lil Dirk for being a fake, a quote unquote fake gangster. After this situation, Melly and Crump would both go on the internet and end up dissing Chino. Hey! Y'all got that order for Nooski? Chino Burger. Chino Burger. Yeah. Y'all got it? Hey, right? Oh, thank you. Oh, Bill. What's up? Y'all with that OTLK shit? Oh, man. Hey, this motherfucker focused his head up, man. Y'all, this shit ain't done, man. Y'all done put this shit back on the grill, man. This shit disgusting, man. Get this shit together, man. For real, this shit bogus as hell, man. Straight up, man. That shit nasty as hell. Yo, little crazy thing, when you need your shit, some motherfuckers remember what you did. Huh? Just like me a piece. Yeah, Chino Burger. That's what they said. Get uh, <laughs> the fuck out of here. Yeah. No, my son ain't just said Chino yeah. Burger. Damn. The next month, on April 3rd, 2015, Bebe from Mob, Motor from Jaro City, and Uchi and Arrow from 051 Young Money 
would kill Lil Boo from 600. About two weeks after that, TB from Taekwon World would kill Capo from Front Street. Now the two actually used to be friends, and TB killed him because Capo was constantly dissing Big V and was extremely disrespectful towards TB's homies. And when Front Street and Taekwon World became ops, Capo allegedly started sending death threats to TB, and that's why TB ended up killing him. THL shit, man. Y'all know how that is. Bad bus stop. Bad bus stop. Gang. Block shot. Him and Bob. Got them jocks ready to spark. I spot a office man down. Get him going, it's no problem. Make it to the top. Don't get your ass found. Like your homie. Bad at bus stop. Bad at bus stop. Bad at bus Melly and Ariel from 051 Young Money would kill Raheem from THF 46. Apparently, Raheem had tried to kill Melly two weeks earlier as a get back for his BDs, but Melly ended up surviving with only shots to his feet, and him and Ariel would end up killing Raheem. Two months later, Bebe and Nut from Mob would kill Stello from 600 on July 22nd, 2015. Stello was driving back to Brick City when he took a shortcut through Mob territory. He stopped at a red light and Mob members ended up spotting him from their car and they got out and ended up shooting at him, resulting in his death. A month later, 600 Breezy would drop Don't Get Smoked, calling out the GDs, 051 Young Money, and even the Chicago Police Department, shouting CPDK, dissing P5, Tuca, and a lot of other dead ops. Later that month, Westbrook from THF46 would kill Wank from 051 Young Money as a get back for Raheem. The next month, Arrow from 051 would kill Taijuan from THF46. The report said Taijuan and a 15 year old friend were victims of a drive by shooting in their neighborhood while the teenagers were walking their block at about 7 30 p.m a car drove by and someone inside started shooting resulting in taijuan's death the next day chief keith would drop off the tuka and yeah it's just mad disrespectful <laughs> Two months later, on November 9th, 2015, J-Mac from O Block would be shot while walking home from a barbershop with his friends around 9.30 p.m. And some people believe it was done by Taekwon World. This would lead his very close friend TQ to grow up hating Taekwon World, and it said that he would diss him on his story just about every day. The next year in 2016, FBG Cash would drop Tuka Gang, and it's basically how it sounds. It was a tribute to his dead homie Tuka, showing that the GDs were up in arms for him. They said Tuka Gang ain't on shit, that's a lie. You fuck around with the Tuka Gang and you fuck around and get shot. I'm from Tukaville, where them niggas down with it. Fuck Brick Squad, cause them niggas clowns with it. I'm on that Tuka Gang. 
two months later on march 16th 2016 dre money thf would drop 46 bars dissing his ops and calling them out we smoke a Zico to the heart, take it to the heart. You talking wise, we gon' spark, shoot up Rabbit's Park. Two months after that, Duck would drop Let's Talk and basically calls out all the fake ass gangsters in the industry and in the streets, and especially calling out the 600 set. Niggas wanna talk about shooters? Well, yo shooters ain't no shit. Fuck a shooter, I hang with killers, I know ain't gon' miss. Niggas wanna talk every nigga smoking too, I swear to God, I'ma make y'all pay for that shit. Niggas wanna talk about murders? Well, how many bodies you got? Niggas wanna talk about rappers? Well, I know rappers is big. Niggas wanna talk about gangsters? Boy, shut the fuck up. BDs turn to GD, GDs turn to BDs, what the fuck? The next month, Rome from THF 46 and T-Man from THF 44 would kill T-Berg from 051 Young Money on June 10th, 2016. I think it's important to note that Rome was the same kid that was present when Quint was killed in 2011 and was a young man that was run over by Montana. So you can bet that he grew up with a hatred for 051 after that. Three days later, Bite Down from 600 and Wu Thang from Duke Squad would kill Bebe Bay from Mob as revenge for killing Stello in the year prior. Four days after that, E Dog from O Block would kill G Twink from Jaro City. Now, this happened outside the hood, and this would insinuate the GDs to get back for this one. Two days after that, S Dot would drop Skrilla, basically just calling out the ops. The next month, on July 17th, 2016, Poppy from Tycoon World and Can't Get Right from STL would kill Chino from O Block. Two months later, Gucci from THF46 would kill E Boy from Mob on September 21st, 2016. And this was even caught on video. Two months after that, TTB Nez would drop Fuck the Ops Part 2, dissing 600 Breezy, LA Capone, Stello, Lil Boo, and a lot of other BD dead homies on November 18th, 2016. Man, look, please don't need to stop. Think I lay the reason you hot. Ask that low minute how she hot. And a little while you gon' get what he got. The next month, on December 1st, 2016, Tristo and Melly from 051 Young Money would kill Trayvon from THF 46. And the next day after that, Rome would kill Shot Mac as a get back for Trayvon in broad daylight and in response to the Fuck the Ops 2 video. He even made some tweets about it later. Two days after that, G.I. Joe and Can't Get Right from STL would kill Big A from O Block. And G.I. Joe was the older brother of K.I. And this was a big hit on O Block, as Big A was a well known shooter and loved by most of the BDs. Later that month, 
on December 28, 2016, Westbrook and Gucci would drop Ooh Remix, calling out their ops and dissing their dead homies, including E-Boy, who they killed that year. Yeah, we smoking on the Zico. Zico! Can't forget Lamar, can't he screech though. Lamar, that snoop booty sass in that knee. Smoking on his fast, getting deep though. Don't go like E-Boy, buy that fucking stove. Fuck him. Don't go like G-O, buy that fucking We smoking Zico, we need more though. Gucci say he got bankroll. I said that's cool night, hurry up. Tectonic K, Front Street K, Savage Squad K. You know how you rockin'. I had them visit villains, take off with that eight ball, take his face off, tack on way in the playoff. King drive, them boys got a deadline, put a fat ass hole in his line. Started as a young and told twos like I'm plumbing. Look, Chris, they be poking, Front Street, they be joking. On February 14, 2017, TB from Taekwon World would kill T Roy. Apparently, TB walked up to T Roy while he was in a store and shot him in the chest. Now, this was another huge loss for O Block as T Roy was one of the most loved members and was always ready to drill for them. King Vaughn, who was incarcerated during this time, let O Block know that something needed to be done and that they needed to take revenge for T Roy. So, members from both O Block and 600 gathered together and created the infamous Get Back Gang. Now just a day after this happened, the block was hot and O Block members were out for blood. On February 15th, 2017, Rage from O Block was arrested after he saw people that he thought didn't belong in the territory and eventually shooting at them, but accidentally hitting an 11 year old girl and killing her. There's even footage of him being beat up in jail for it. Later that month, Just Blow, Buka, and Young Famous would drop Dirty Glock, letting the ops know that they're ready for war and paying homage to T Roy by including a clip of him at the end of it. Posted on the break, glizzy with a stick, six so nigga, and I keep a 30 club. Ask the ops about me, they can tell you what I do. If I ain't sliding the gliding, I'm bad on busting moves. Gotta keep a two. When we turn up, give a fuck about the place. The next month, Angela and Montana from 051 Young Money would kill Bobo from THF 46 on March 6th. 2017. Basically, long story short, they knew that Bobo was being released from jail and waited for him to get out. And after Bobo was released, they rode up on him and shot him, resulting in a huge car chase before they crashed and got away on foot. Luckily for them, the helicopter usually used in situations like these was grounded due to inclement weather, so they got away. And this was another big loss for the BDs. Later that month, on March 24th, 2017, Lil Tuan from Tycoon World would release Homicide, basically upping himself, talking about murder, having shooters or rider dies, and calling out the ops. It's gonna be another homicide, homicide. It's gonna be another homicide, homicide. Keep that glizzy on my side, just so I can stay alive. Know some niggas that's gonna ride, know some niggas that gonna slide. 
want some smoke, just let me know. We got free smoke for the low. We got bees with the scope. I'm just trying to let you know I'm on that money. The next month on March 3rd, 2017, Fredo and Lil Reese would drop Prove Something. It, it goes pretty hard. It kind of reminds me of Memphis rap. And I don't know, it could possibly be a response to Homicide being dropped just like a week prior, but I don't know. You gonna make me grab my chopper and just shoot something. Just shoot something. Say you got a body, nigga, prove something. Prove something. All my niggas grab me, we gonna do something. Do something. Say you got a chopper, nigga, shoot something. Shoot something. Skeet off from the... Wait up a fuck, nigga, cribbing broad day. Hey, fan that nigga, shoot, where's mama stay? Fuck it. The next month on May 15th, 2017, Gleesh, E Dog, Duke, and HK, all from O Block, would kill Lil Ho from Jaro City. Now, the story goes they were drilling in Jaro territory when they killed Lil Ho, and this would be the first get back for T Roy. A week later, Catfuck12 and Mikado from 600 would kill Jamo from Mob in support of O Block getting back for T Roy. In the next month on June 7th, 2017, FBG Duck would drop intro, posted up on 63rd, and especially dissing Nooski, only stoking the fire that O Block had for revenge. Been on the paper chase. I've been playing with Rose. About a week later, Duke and HK from O Block would kill Poppy from Taekwon World. And the story goes that HK and Duke were riding around when they spotted Poppy, and HK would get out and shoot him in the head. Thereafter, he would be known as the Headshot King. The next month, Catfuck12 from 600, Gleesh, Trey5, E Dog, and HK from O Block would kill Kobe Mac from Taekwon World and Brick from STO. Apparently, they were drilling when they saw FBG Duck's brother Brick and Kobe Mac in a car. They rolled down their windows and began shooting at them. Brick tried to run away, but he was chased down by HK and Trey5, who ended up shooting him several times. Now, this was a pretty big hit, and originally there were so many BD members there because they planned to get in a large shootout with STL. About a week later, Dooski would drop Letter to Scrap, and it's a whole song dedicated to his fallen homie. Say to your face, like, why you have your pole on you, nigga? Lord, know you a blow at a nigga. What's wrong with you, nigga? Sit that day, I keep it on me, my nigga. I love for you. Who would have thought one day I'll merge some monk? Shit crazy. And your brother Melly, he just had a babe. Name Lil Brown. Yeah, the guy's still tweaking with each other. Some like some, and the other hate the other. I already know what you finna say. That we ain't shit if we ain't got. Two months later, on September 26th, 2017, HK English from Oblock and Mikado from 600 would kill TB from Taekwon World and ended up shooting side from Jaro City. Apparently, a neighboring set of Black Peace Stones gave HK TB's location and they killed him. Allegedly, HK said this is for T Roy before shooting him and getting revenge for his brother. Two days after that, E Dog and Gleesh from O Block would kill Fradio from Jarl City. Apparently, they were riding around when they spotted Fradio, got out of the car, asked for where he was from, and then shot him. The next month, Lil Reese and Lil Dirk would drop Distance, the Goes Dummy, and I don't know. It could be. It could be possibly a shout out to the sh the O Block shooters who previously caught bodies, but I don't know. 
And I love my vultures Do what they say, them boys are just talking Greasy money, hawk them Ain't no nigga in the city gonna really try to stop them Here's how I made it so good So much shit I can say But it'll get me locked today After doing bad, I pray Got your bitch all in the rave Why you niggas not listening? These niggas shooting from a distance Fuck niggas, they gonna make me keep my distance the next month on November 24th, 2017, Wooski from STL, Lil Cho from Taekwon World, and Skinny from Jaro City would kill HK from O Block. Apparently, they went to O Block looking for revenge and spotted HK, and all three chased after him before shooting him multiple times. After this hit, Taekwon World, STL, and Jaro City all got revenge by killing HK. The next month, on December 24th, 2017, Montana and Drilla would drop facts, dissing Get Back Gang, 600, and O Block, and also shouting out EBT, and specifically dissing Bobo, maybe alluding to the claim that they both killed them. Who knows? The next year, in 2018, Wooski from STL would drop Computer's Remix, dissing Lil Steve, Big A, Dirk, Ide, Nooski, D-Thang, Kida, who is a woman who died of natural causes, J Money, Lil Boo, HK, Aleka Pone, OD, Baldi, Pluto, Chino, White White, not to mention the Black Disciples gang as a whole, Front Street, O Block, Brick City, TYMB set, and also the police department on January 2nd, 2018. I'm so BDK, CPDK, and TYMBK. Boy, fuck old block, bitch. We from Street K and we Brick City K. They terrified niggas telling on me, so I'm a chill. Phone and stood over J Money and put four in this grill. Smoking big A in traffic, trying to catch Dirk or E Day. Slide on new ski, they these dirty spray. You died in new ski way. Don't ask Lil Boo how that hot shit feel. HK got caught trying to pump fake and folk out on his heels. And every time we on they block, somebody gon' get killed. Later that month, on January 19th, 2018, Fredo Santana would die from a seizure. A week later, Duck would drop Slide, and yeah, you know it. You know how it goes. Turn that auto tune off, you know I'm coming. This a real nigga party you cannot get in. Busting out the mid, phone them out the zan. I can shake your hand. No, I'm not your friend. I don't fuck with rappers. Cause if you go slap, push a nigga then slide then. Let me see some fucking shots fired then. Niggas really shoot no accident. I can't make this shit up. I cannot pretend. Damn. And I heard you know who shot your man. Man, they shoot that crib up you had me. Don't wanna hit him loud. The next month on February 4th, 2018, Buka would drop pesos, mentioning how much he misses LA and shouts out shooters HK, Duke, and Mikado, and also his homeboy Rondo. Keep your feelings low key, keep your living low key, keep your feelings low key, keep your vibes low key. A week after that, Wooski and Dooski would drop shooters, paying homage to Tuka and Shooter KI while dissing Lil Mo and calling out the BDs. Three months later, on May 15th, 2018, 
Dooski would drop Who Run It Remix, calling out the Ops, Chief Keef, and Lil Herbo specifically, dissing Lil Mo and paying homage to his fallen homie Scrap. Who the fuck won't war with us? Send a couple slots, they scared. I remember they was riding through Front Street. Looking for Keith a little hair. When I pull up, the niggas just run. No more came through, blew all the shots up. I'm about to turn a nigga to a mannequin. Headshot, net shot, by shot, by shot. Can't breathe, now niggas start panicking. Skate all full up on the top, bitch. Niggas set, they ain't outside. These niggas in the career looking outside. They don't really want war, niggas stop lying. Five times through, blowing my black eye. How about nigga, all you just come 10 days after that, Lil T and Bezu from THF46 would kill Mubu Crump from Dro City and Woon Melly from 051 Young Money. Apparently they were caught outside during a party before being shot and Melly ended up surviving a headshot wound. The next month on June 10th, 2018, Lil James from TYMB would kill Ty from STL. It's important to note that Ty was the uncle of Manny Fresh, so remember that. Four days later, Just Blow, Mimo 600, Young Famous would drop Tukey Tuke, dissing Tukeville and ripping 600. At this point, Get Bad Gang was still active and out for blood, especially after the death of HK. And on June 16th, 2018, Duke and Muwat from O Block would kill Can't Get Right from STL. Apparently, they were informed that Can't Get Right was in a store and drove there and killed him, along with an innocent bystander who was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know. Hey, everybody, not at one time. What just oh, happened? Dang, we <laughs> Who got killed? That's what I'm asking y'all. Yeah. Can't get right, got killed. Merge. Can't get right, got If somebody died. show me a picture, I don't think I know y'all talking about. I'm gonna say drop a picture in the comments. Show the first picture. <laughs> is this can't get right? Is that can't get right? Hold on. Is show this him. him? Is this or can't is this get him? right? Is this him? Is this him? This is how he look. This is what he look like. They tell us we can't get up. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> they always make some shit before we do it. They beat us to it every time. See, y'all should start killing people. Oh, Cause y'all be doing this. You be doing the man. Oh, Steve. This the next month, on July 24th, 2018, Lil Dirk, OTF Ikey, Buka 600, and Duty Low would drop play your role and at this point otf is popping and dirk would sign with interscope just three days later the next month on august 18th 2018 montana would drop tana two times with drilla in the video calling out their ops dissing their dead homies and again specifically dissing Bobo, maybe alluding to the claim that they killed him Later that month, on August 31st, 2018, Manny Fresh from STO would kill Lil James from TYMB as revenge for his uncle, who was killed earlier that year. The next month, on September 10th, 2018, Lil Durk would drop No Auto. Y'all know this one. Catch him, knock his noodles back. Just don't tweak out here. Phone him sliding late night, honey. Ain't no sleep out here. I'll be on my dick and songs, but I don't pay him no mind. 
All them hoes that be with the odds gang and broke they spine. New I pack in the air, this gas or what? He'll still be a laugh right now if you niggas ain't gas him up. That same day, Drolo would drop 51 dead ops. Y'all know this one too. Basically, this is every single deceased BD that I've talked about up until this point, including other ops that 051 had. Two days after that, Buka would drop City of Heck, which is basically a tribute to his fallen homies, HK and T Roy. I lost hey, then I lost who Like it tough as a road Hey, the first person I sent pesos 500,000 hits I went gold Gotta protect the gold from the wars Protect your energy for you or yours Where you know I be coming, man? So what you want, bro? We finna tee the streets up Took us old Shout out Get Back Game, man Get back. You know what the fuck going on? That's us, dumb. Oh boy, what the fuck I'm known for? Call the body, beat that body, catch some more. The niggas vanish. Rest in peace, the Chino Dollar. Do his in the parlors. If we spot him, then we got him. He won't see tomorrow. DQ from O Block and Catfuck 12 from 600 will kill Dooski from Mob on October 10th, 2018. The next day, Lil Sean from Mob would kill Waldo from 600 as revenge for Dooski. Apparently, he saw Waldo walking in the street, pulled up to him, and shot him several times. Later that month, on October 19, 2018, Miski, D-Mac, and D-Man from O Block would drop Come Back, which is them basically posted up on the block, dissing their ops, including Can't Get Right, who was killed that year. It's just a group of youngins, really, but I think it was important to show what type of environment they grow up around and how early these youngins get involved in that street life. Now, four days later, DQ, Muwap, Gleesh, and E Dog knew that Wooski from STL would be at Dooski from Mob's funeral, so they pulled up during a service and attempted to kill him. People ended up being shot, including Wooski, who was shot in the head, but miraculously survived on October 23rd, 2018. The next month, on November 28th, 2018, Lil Twan from Taekwon World will release 62 dead ops. Yeah, it's like 51 dead ops, but you know. Lil Steve got called trying to take a piss. Damn Lil Ball, you got head in this shit. Call Lil Kitty, she was trying to do a dick. Left Whitey on the dry, left smelling like shit. Her T Roy got hit. Why the fuck he was trying to lurk? Say he tried to run, but he wind up tripping on that big ass shirt. Fuck they treated LA. Leonard. Fuck J Money. I piss on his grave. They called Bobo and made his at his day. Her little dirt was trying to say he knew, knew that. And in the month after that, King Von would release the music video Crazy Story on December 11th, 2018. And it completely blows up. Yo shit on the curb, boy, we put in work from 64th and from 65th, we not from 63rd. That same day, E Day would release music video 600 Dead Ops, presumably in response to Lil Twan, and maybe in collaboration with King Vaughn. I don't know. Hit your top, you do a squad on bus off, that's your last stop. Off this pill, I'm Zooty, hit that trooper, make my head stop. Come through when they school me, gush. Go to Grand, better stay out my business. Shoot up the freedom road, make sure they feel it. Niggas can coop, that's one in a million. Call Jojo on his bike, they shot him off his mask. Damn. <laughs> and Wolfie ain't the same, he got hit in his head. Oh, no. We thought his ass was dead. The next year, in 2019, Mimo from 600 and an unknown associate from Blackgate would kill Motor and Side from Jarrow City on January 3rd, 2019. I marked Blackgate with the yellow circle on the map. It's just another hood of BDs. And, you know, Motor and Side were good friends and, and they were just hanging out and got killed. About two weeks later, Mimo and Just Blow would drop gang banging, shouting out O Block and Get Back Gang, calling out the ops and paying homage to LA Capone. Don't 
remember me. Sympathy. We ain't showing none. They took that life from me. Pray for me. When I go to sleep, them demons fuck with me. Be like, got kickback, got kickback. Shooters from along gon' shoot up your kickback. Yo, kickback. Them old block boys don't go for some get back. Rip your sand, throw your hood, bitch. We gang gang. Gang bang gang. Bitch, huh? What's your gang? The next month. FBG Duck and Ruga would drop Exposing Me Remix, and he just comes out the gate dissing O Block, T Roy, Lil Boo, Lil Steve, and a whole bunch of other BDs. And it's just mad disrespectful. Stello got hit from the back of the seat. Damn, on the back of the seat. He tried to get up from the back of the seat. They left his head in the back of the seat. Fuck your homie dead. You heard what I said. Fuck Sharad. Fuck OD. Fuck D. Thang. Get fucked tired. A month after that, on March 16, 2019, Mimo 600 would drop Steppers. From what I gather from the song, it's just throwing shots at his ops, saying that they're really not about shit. And he would go on to diss Tuka and pay homage to his homie Lil Steve. Oh, you be with them steppers, huh? You ain't even help your man. That's why I ain't got no friends. Honey cake for pain. Oh, you be with them steppers. like Fila. Stepping on niggas like Kels, Kels. Pull up, we handing off shells, shells. My name ring, ding, ding, bells, bells. Long list, these throw L's, L's. Pull up the mark, hey. From them gon' spark, spark, hey. Get a fuck what that mark, say. From them catch you loafing on your block, they leave you, that's a mark, hey. The next day, OTF Ike will release Dead Bodies. And it's just, he kind of shows like, two dead bodies um so i don't know possibly alluding to the death of motor and side that were killed earlier that year maybe question mark i don't know not saying it was but you know y'all could shoot y'all could decide that for yourself you know how it goes you're a pussy ass nigga you ain't gang 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 Bitch. you're a pussy ass nigga can't hang while i hang shoot a sitting at your ass all these shoes around me ain't got no country be your brains in the concrete we signed all SRT. Hella me. But these niggas already know they telling names. These niggas signing deals with the DA. Two months later, on May 2nd, 2019, Lil Dirk and King Vaughn would drop Crazy Story Remix, repping O Block and Lamron, shouting out Buka, and calling out their ops on 63rd. Check the scope. If y'all lose one more, that's six to 24. Let me focus. Can't be zoning out. He pulling up now. He double pop. He ain't get drop on a rapping nigga i be from the rack i'm like cool then i front your movie you become a pack you see fun you see 40 tight ain't no point in slime they be talking from the internet they don't be outside hit the six call dada out tell them about the lick two months after that on july 19 2019 duck would drop on that car and yeah it goes hard he gonna try to run but he won't make it fly make it they know what we real what we real. The next month, Lil Durk in 21 would drop Die Slow. It's not really anything too complicated or subliminal. Durk literally says, For the man who killed my cousin, make sure he dies slow. For the nigga that killed my cousin, make sure he dies slow. I know a killer that's ready to shoot some. Black in my lap, I'm scrapped. Two rich to fist fight niggas get clapped. And the next month, on September 1st, 2019, some people believe the person was a BD. Most people believe that it was a man from Jaro City ended up killing Melly from 051 Young Money. He was actually shot during a party in Jaro City territory, which is why most people believe it was someone from Jaro City. Speculation over his death includes conflict over a gambling, a girl, or maybe even just straight up talking shit. We'll never know. Later that month, on September 24th, 2019, Manny from 600 would kill Travis from Jarrow City. Travis was killed hours after streaming on Facebook Live and getting in an argument with a girl from his outside, 
basically calling her a hoe and he ended up naming off people that she's been with both from gds and bds and during the live you can literally hear the woman that travis is with pleading with him to end the live and stop talking shit because she knew what he was getting himself into that night he was killed walking along the street with that same woman at 2 a.m because she come on my live talking shit Oh, fuck Greg. I've been annoying you for all the little shit you've been saying. I've been trying to annoy you. On my dead mama Gray, I've been trying to annoy you. On Jobs for Gray. On fuck. Now, Merchant on Divine, you ain't say that. Oh, Merchant on Divine, you ain't fuck Lil Boo. On fuck. Uh, I thought Lil Boo. I thought Ray Ray was your first. Travis. No. Lil Boo was fucking the dogs at you, and, look, and Divine was fucking the dogs at you too. Travis. No, I'm going to keep it all real. What the fuck is you doing? Free M thing. On um, 4 though, he a free M thing because M thing said he was fucking the dog shit out your ass. On job, he was fucking the dog shit out your ass. Lil Boo was fucking the dog shit out your ass. Rest in peace, yeah. Queen Booby, because Booby Eady said it. Divine said he, I mean. You hear me? In the line. Lil Boo was fucking the dog Q shit out your ass. Q just in the line. Q just in the line. Q just in line. Drive, I ain't in live and I'm, I, I'm Drive. saying that for a reason. I ain't for the talk shit. Go. Drive. I ain't stop talking shit. Drive. What's up, live? How y'all doing? What's going on? Don't say shit else. Chill. Because that shit going to go to some whole other shit. For real. Man. You know that. So that's why y'all need to chill. Y'all need to you chill. You ain't got nothing to do with it. Exactly, she stand for the bust your window, though. I'm oh, for She bust um, the window. We going to go bust her shit and call one. It's motherfuckers in there. So she need to chill. And you need to chill off that live, bro. Chop, what's the word, bro? Big wise. Chill. Two months later, on November 11th, 2019, Lil Reese would be shot, supposedly by someone from 051 Young Money. He actually got hit in the neck and miraculously survived. The next month on December 7th, 2019, FBG Duck would drop Chicago Legends, which was basically a tribute to all the fallen, including Lil Jojo, Young Poppy, Zach TV. Zach TV was a man that would go around different hoods around the United States and interview different gang members, and he actually ended up being killed in Chicago. Lil Mark, Dooski, and even people from his quote unquote op side, including Nooski, Fredo, LA Capone, Lil Mister, and Smiles. Yeah, and basically just Says some real shit. You know what got to me? What got to you? When a nigga killed Zach TV. Let me hear you say fuck them niggas fuck if you feel me. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about Lil Mark. He was a demon, but he had a good heart. Plus, plus he was too good, brother. That's the good part. Niggas ain't play. Only right that I talk about Dooski. Talk about Dooski. You know Dooski. I'm finna tell your ass is a movie. Yeah, they they got that. tall popping diggers getting booed. Okay. So now we gon' talk about news talk about But I barely knew him like that much, really. But I heard he kept the strap no I mean that would yeah. Can't forget about Fredo either Big business man tried to keep it legal Stand up nigga, he fed his people Hell no Talk about LA cause he a legend talk too good, I ain't big rap, just thinking ahead of you All of them legends, who could you compare them to? Trying to show the betting The day after that, someone from Tycoon World would kill TQ And if you don't remember, TQ was one of the younger dudes was close with J-Mac that was killed and ended up hitting Taekwon and would diss him on his story multiple times. Later that month on December 27, 2019, HK and T-Roy's younger brother Zell would be shot while at work. While he was taking out the garbage, two men got into a verbal altercation with him before firing shots at him. Thankfully he survived and it's unknown whether the two men were actually affiliated with any gang. The next year, in 2020, on February 7th, Drilla would drop Fuck the Ops, being extra disrespectful, and he dissed way too many people for me to list for y'all, so. 30 got hit with the 30. 30. T.Y. got hit in his head. Call Waldo making a status. Drill. Left him okay, my dead. That shit be crazy. Dead ops got you nicks my attention. Most of that shit weak not to miss. And Larissa got shot in the neck. Ain't list. What did you say? Curry old here was big. That's why that shit got popped. And T.Y. couldn't take all those shots. They say he got caught trying to talk to a bop. Two days after that, Lil Bubba and D-Money from Taekwon World would kill Jado from O-Block. And the report said... 
that Jada was walking along the street when someone got out of a green BMW and shot him, hitting him multiple times. Later that month, on February 21st, 2020, King Vaughn would drop Tooker to the O, further dissing his GD rivals, FBG Duck, and his dead brother Brick. Although there are no official name drops, he does mention the actual words Duck and Brick. Uh, so some people think it was a subliminal diss towards them. I don't know. She gon' need a lift, she left her phone, so I picked it up. This whole slow as fuck, now Miss Calls, three of them for mom, the other six say duck. She's got the top from the stripper bitch, she from Kanker, she just brought a Glock with a ruler clip. Boy, don't play with me, this bitch a hoe. Mad at yelling about a bitch, picked up a brick, he merged it on brick and threw it at my whip. Now I'm like, shit, I hopped out so quick, then I raised my blick and I don't miss. Not back, no doubt, I know you mad, cause I smoked your man. Left him on the curb, she started laughing, she say fuck that nigga. He from 63rd. Just Literally about a week and a half later, FBG Duck would drop I'm from 63rd in response to King Von's took her to the O. First of all, I don't know no shit. I don't know no cash from care. care. And that nigga in that video, he can't be me. Like, seriously, the dirt white said it's fucking little boy to play white, white, white. You, 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 you a sacrifice. He sent you to get bodies. Basically, he just signed you over to the Illuminati. I think like he is one of the niggas that lying all his ways for you fucking up my clientele. Hey, go and get your Two months after that, King Von would drop Broke Ops on May 19th, 2020, and also posting a video called Back to the Block, where he shows himself re upping his BDs with money and presumably weapons. We scold another cabron. Design is a bitch. All of this I saw my wrist and it feel like it's Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, cookie woke up, ain't doing no dry bass. Yo and VP that bitch my side. Just a wild little nigga from the south side. Nigga killed your homie on the come outside. Fuck your come on, she turned. All eyes be broke, they hurt. They broke my niggas, they too a fish. Send a text, they get right with you. Y'all also wanna play a monkey in the middle. Fuck T Roy and O D them dead bitch. You heard about J Money? Yeah. Made Chicago legend shit. That was just about business. <laughs> heard he mixing brick name. Uh uh, no he didn't. Later that year, on August fourth, twenty twenty. FBG Duck would be shot in broad daylight while standing out of a store in the city's Gold Coast neighborhood. Law enforcement confirmed that three individuals, including FBG Duck, were hit after two vehicles pulled up with armed gunmen four people hopping out the car and opening fire. On October 30th, 2020, Vaughn and Polo G would drop the code, which is pretty interesting when you think about it because there's a lot of BDs that are locked up that might, I'm not gonna say they do, but they might have knowledge on, or maybe even just a little bit of knowledge of Vaughn's activities and may have been offered once or multiple times a plea deal to testify against him and as he claimed in the song nobody is folded catch him and change him look how they played him he only gangsta up on his computer he played foul and we gave him a pass that don't mean we won't get on your ass i know some niggas that's quick to get police a tip but my nigga he never folded the next month on november 6 2020 Lil Durk and Pooh Shiesty would drop back in blood. Pooh Shiesty, who was clicked up with Choppa Gang, was dissing a rival clique from Memphis called Bezel Gang, and allegedly Pooh and his homeboys stole guns from them, saying, come get it back in blood, basically daring them to come do something about it and die. Yeah. And Durk in the song disses Mubu Crump for talking shit about his cousin and getting killed in 2018, or it also could have been directed towards FBG Duck, who also dissed Nooski and got killed that year you gotta know i go too far get two o's up on this honey one of my stand for hood, huh? no he was dissing on my cousin now his ass all in that wood huh? and on that same day king von and o block slutty who is the older brother of hk and t-roy would die in an altercation in atlanta and here's the video basically explaining what happened
The next year in 2021, EBG E Jizzle, the people who Pooh Shiesty dissed in Back in Blood, would respond by dissing Pooh and claiming in the song out of two guys that hit the lick on them, one of them was killed and the other is incarcerated. And they would also go on to call out O Block. And in an interview about it, they basically stated that a friend of their op is also an op. You keep sending all these shots to time to let them know what's so Cold got dropped and meets got locked so we couldn't get it back in blood. Cause of post, speak on bells and you get shot. No me and stash lay on your spot. Dirk, you hopping on this song, don't make me slide through O Block. No, we step on shit for real. You niggas broke without a deal. Cutty woofing for a hoe. I'll find the gang till you get poked. Nah, I the bang, I do. Next month, 600 Breezy will drop new ops, dissing Quando Rondo, calling for his head on February 18, 2021. Three days later, Ray Rilla from O Block would drop 23 dead ops, and Bro even has a tattoo of Jojo's name on his fucking chest. Jeez. Fuck all the ops, them little niggas broke on phone them and most of them they at. Smoking on Tuka, bitch, I ain't no hooper, bitch, I'm a real shooter, bitch. I was busting so hard, I was off of the yachts when K, I got dropped, bitch. I'm off of the wool right now, I'm pulling up for a little mark in the pop, bitch. Niggas say Jojo couldn't get touched, on phone no grave, look at him now. Them niggas couldn't even pay for his from no D-Rose brick ass, put him in the ground. On February 28th, 2021, EBG E. Jizzle would end up being shot but survive and drop the song Paralyze. Apparently his ops thought he was paralyzed after the shooting. And apparently this also caught the GD's attention because Skinny from Jaro City would go on to shout him out on his Instagram story. Yeah, and um, you know, that's basically it. Here we are now in April, 2021. Chief Keef and a lot of the other rappers stopped the dissing. Um, they stopped the talking shit. Uh, a lot of people are locked up now. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I like to say that most of what I've just said throughout the whole video, especially with anybody involved with the murder accusations, it's all just alleged information. It's not 100% accurate or inaccurate. And I mean, when it comes to like, I don't know, the music, the whole main listening to all that, you know, mainstream diss tracks and all that type of stuff. I'm hoping that now after, if you, whoever you, you, who watch this, uh, learning about all the all these people, you know, have some respect for the dead. I've seen a lot of videos where people talk about, you know, fuck Tuka, fuck this dead person, and fuck that dead person. But dude, chill out with that shit. Just because somebody is your favorite rapper's op, does not mean that they're yours. Beats, beats.